How do you actually take money from an IRA? That's what we're going to talk about here today, the actual mechanics of it. I get this question a lot about, Josh, I get all the thoughts and you know theories behind this and the strategies, but how do I actually get the money out? We're going to talk about it here today. So I'm going to show you a little bit on my uh, fancy schmancy uh, whiteboard with that. Man, that's just Picasso drawing there. So you know, if you heard it here first, man, I am the next Picasso. Um, and then we're going to go upstairs and show you some screenshots of my own IRA in which I'll show you how I do it. And then you can maybe learn from that as well. Now, I use USAA as my broker. Now, again, broker just means my, or actually custodian is the better way to look at it. The place where I hold my money uh, as at USAA. So USAA may or may not be more favorable to your account, but I imagine it's just as fine. You, I, hard to imagine any online uh, retail shop anymore, even like American Funds or Ed Jones doesn't give you the opportunity to take money out of your IRA without having to call somebody, but we'll see. Anyway, all right, so here we got old Josh, happy Josh, and he's got his, you know, messed up hair there. He's got his umbrella uh, shielding him for all the taxes. You can see taxes, taxes are coming at me every which way is Sunday, taxes. But I'm like, man, I am under my IRA. I'm being shielded from all that without question, which is good. So the taxes are coming down, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm like, no, no problem. But at some point, I got to move out from underneath that IRA, and I'm going to have to pay taxes. All right, so boink, we go, ooh, and we no longer have an IRA, so I have to, now the tax is going to hit me. Well, that's going to happen at some point, even if you have a Roth IRA to get the money under the umbrella, you're going to have to pay the taxes on the front end. Now, with a traditional IRA or 401k, you're being shielded from taxes, but you're going to have to pay tax on the back end. So there's two different choices for you. I, obviously, if you've been following the YouTube channel, read my books, you know I love the Roth for sure. Not in every circumstance, but generally speaking, I do. It's my default go-to guy. Uh, but either way, this will be you at some point, and this will be you at some point. And we'd rather have you be this be you on the front end, and this be you on the back for sure. But with that said, all right, that's great, Josh, but I, I get all that. But how do I actually get the money out? And here's where it's going to come. We're going to have to go over some basic planning scenarios here. All right, so let's say you have $100,000, and we'll just say VTSMX. I'm just using that as a Vanguard Total Stock Index Fund. And look, I'm not recommending. I literally have no clue what it's trading at. But let's say you have $100,000 in Vanguard Total Stock Index. And you say, I need $10,000. I want to get $10,000 out of my account. Make sense? And we're going to say Vanguard Total Stock Index is trading at uh, $50 a share. So you go online and, and I'll show you when we go to my screen share. And you hit a drop down. And it says there's no money available for a distribution. You're like, whoa. I got $100,000 in my account. What the heck? What do you mean there's no money available? Make sure I got my trusty old calculator, which I do. And they say, no, you don't have any cash because you can only withdraw cash. You cannot withdraw, you can't withdraw online shares. Now, if you're going to get the broker or the custodian, they can do that for you and just put the shares directly into your non IRA account, but you just can't do that online. You can only withdraw cash. Only withdraw cash cash so I don't have any cash I'm fully invested so what I need to do is I need to generate cash and the way I gotta do that is I gotta get ten thousand dollars so I gotta say is that 50 bucks a share that means I gotta sell 200 shares all right so I wait I, I go and I place an order let's do a different color here so I'm gonna sell 200 shares of that equals ten thousand dollars with me so far so now that's what has to happen so i gotta sell 200 shares of a 50 dollar investment vtsmx and i'll net uh ten thousand bucks or you can sell ten thousand dollars worth or sell ten thousand worth so what happens with a mutual fund, just to let you know, if it's a mutual fund, you actually want to sell the number the number you need, the money. So if it's an actual mutual fund, you don't want to sell the shares, you want to sell the value that you want to take out. So if it's a mutual fund, you say, I want to sell $10,000 as opposed to the number of shares. And the reason for that is simple. 
Uh, mutual funds only trade once a day. So you literally have no idea what the price will be at the end of the day, at four o'clock. You don't know. So if you sold a number of shares, and right now it's at 50 bucks a share, but it ends up at $48 a share, you're not gonna net your $10,000. You'll net less than that. And the issue is you don't know what the price will be on a mutual fund when you sell it, which is another reason I do like ETFs, exchange traded funds, because you, you, you only trade once a day. So if it's a mutual fund, you dot, you'll go to your drop down box and you'll say transaction and you have to go in there and say sell, all right? And then it's gonna say number of shares or dollars, number of shares or dollars. You say, I wanna sell dollar amount. And it'll say how much you wanna sell and you want $10,000 worth. Does that make sense? Now again, if it's, uh, we'll talk, I'll show you a, a more visual when I go to my screen share. But that's what happens with a mutual fund. You've got to go on the order and make a trade, a transaction for a specific amount of, of dollars that you want. All right. Now, if it's an ETF, for instance, and you go online or a stock, something that trades throughout the trading day and exchange traded funds do. So if an ETF usually has three symbols, a stock usually has three uh, letters, I should say, for a stock symbol, There's sometimes two, sometimes even one. Uh, but if it's three or less, that means you can trade it most likely throughout the day. Again, from, was it 9.30 to four, is I think the markets, yeah. If it's a five letter one, uh, that means it's a mutual fund, generally speaking, which means it only trades once a day. So just remember that, if it's a mutual fund, sell the cash that you need. If it's an ETF or individual stock and it has you know, basically four uh, letters will be a NASDAQ traded stock or ETF, sell the shares because the shares you can sell throughout the trading day. I hope that makes sense, but it's critical. So if I need 10,000 bucks I, and I have a mutual fund, I'm gonna sell, tell USA, I'm gonna place an order to sell $10,000 worth of mutual fund. If I need 10,000 bucks and I have an ETF and the thing's trading at $50 a share, I'm gonna put an order in to sell 200 shares at the market price, which right now is at 50 bucks, because that is what the, uh, the price will be, uh, according to what it is now. And that's the difference between a, eh, I don't wanna get too deep in market prices versus limited orders, but if you go online and it says uh, ETF is trading at $50 a share, you say I wanna sell 200 shares, it'll say you want a market order, which means it executes immediately, or do you wanna put a limit order, which says it only execute once it hits a certain amount that you're trying to generate uh, in terms of price. I'm not a fan of limit orders, generally speaking, in some ways there are, but in this case, what we're trying to accomplish here is just getting money out of the IRA. Just do a market price uh, for that day. Again, I've told you before, do not put an open order in on a stock the night before. Don't do that for the love of me. Don't say, yes, it's eight o'clock at night. I've had a few beers. You know, the Redskins just lost, so I'm pretty mad. And you know, I don't like Trump or I don't like Obama. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell my shares. I'm gonna go online. I'm gonna put an open market order, an open order, because it hasn't closed. Closed order means it's been executed or it's been canceled. I can open order. I can put a market order in for 100, my whole entirety of my portfolio. It's eight o'clock at night. That means I'll wake up in the morning and the markets will have done something. And that means I could either get hammered uh, because the price fell off a cliff because of something happened out in the Middle East, something happened with a tweet, something happened with the earnings call, something happened, something happened, something happened. And my open order will be executed at first available price, which could be 20% lower than what it was the night before. I've, I've happened right here to this guy on the queues. I've told you before, when I was at Schwab on the trading desk, I put an open market order, it was a Yahoo, it was Yahoo. I think it was a Q's. Anyway, it, it, you know, from it, we're talking back then, it was a 1999 or 19 or something like that. So it wasn't a huge amount of money for me, but it's pretty much a pretty significant portion of my liquid net worth. And that, that pained me. So don't do that. All right. So we want to put a market order in. Let's say it's two o'clock in the afternoon. You say, yeah, I need 10,000 bucks. Go online, process a transaction, sell 200 shares of my ETF, VOO. Uh, right now it's trading at 50 bucks. You want us to execute this? Yep, it costs you 4.95 a trade or whatever it is. Yep, click, click, done. And that will execute immediately and then you're done. All right, so now with a mutual fund, it's uh, typical mutual funds are T plus uh, one. Now that this might have changed, uh, to be honest, it's, it changes quite a bit, but it used to be T plus one or T plus three. So like for a USAA, um, at a, if I was to trade a USAA fund, I'd have access to the cash the following day. So I put the order in you know, that morning, I'd have access to the cash, not at the end of the night, but the following day if memory serves. Stocks and ETFs are typically T plus three, which means if I execute this on Monday, 
it won't be available to Thursday. All right, now a T plus one means if I execute on Monday, and I might, yes, uh, Tuesday one's available. T plus one. And you got to look at your own firm to see what they do. But remember that just because you put an order in and executes doesn't mean the cash is ready for you that day. It won't be, as a matter of fact, I guarantee. It's either going to be T plus one or T plus three. It used to be T plus five when I started on this in the mid 90s. It was T plus five. You had to wait five days for the cash actually cleared. People get pissed. Like, why are you doing my cash? Like, look, we can't give it to you. We don't deliver it. We got to wait for the cash to settle. T plus three or T plus five. But mutual funds are typically T plus one. Stocks and ETS are typically T plus three. I'll leave that up to you to figure out with your broker. All right, so now I put an ex I executed an order. So, so we have an open order, which means I'm submitting a buy or a sell to a broker to execute it for me. That's an open order. It gets closed. A closed order means it's already been done. Either it got executed or it's I close it on my own without making the trade. So I have an open order. I put in a buy, a buy or in this case a sell to sell 200 shares of my ETF or my mutual fund at 50 bucks a pop. It will get executed. If it's an ETF, it'll get executed right then. If it's a mutual fund, it'll get executed at 4 p.m. the closing business that day, that day. The cash won't be available for at least a day. So if it's a mutual fund, and again, I can't remember if it's a mutual fund that executes, if it's available on Tuesday or Wednesday, I just forgot. But it won't be available uh, that night. I tell you right now, and I think it might be Wednesday, but you'd have to look at that. Uh, stock, if you execute on Monday, it will be available on Thursday or an ETF, which means I won't be able to get my $10,000 out until either one day or three. So, if I may, don't be one of these guys who says, I need that $10,000 basically yesterday because I had this great closing deal on a home. And then try to go to get your money out of your IRA uh, to close later on today. It doesn't work. Like I cannot tell you how many people have got mad because I need my money. It's my money. Why can't I get it? You don't get it. It's not your money, essentially, until it executes and clears and settles. So don't say I need 10,000 bucks to have this great real estate that I need by the end of the day. If you don't have cash, you only have uh, securities, you have to sell the security and you won't have access to it to at least the next day, if not four days from the day you execute it. And by the way, but it still has got to go through a wire if you need it wired over to your bank. And that takes a day too. So I'm just telling, I cannot tell you how many people, I need the money tomorrow. You're not getting it. You have no cash, you got to make a sale to generate the cash, the sale could take T plus one or T plus three. And if we're gonna wire it to your bank, cause the bank's not gonna take a personal check when you're going to closing, if we gotta send a wire, the wire takes a day too, for the love of me. So it's, it doesn't work like that. So if you have securities and you think you might need access to the cash, you better sell something to raise the cash, to get the cash ready to go. I, I, I cannot stress this enough. Now, if you have the cash in there, it's easy. And this, again, well, I'll show you. If the cash is available to you, then it's literally just a click here, click there, and it'll be automatically deposited in your bank account. It will ask you for taxes, which I'll show you. And then you just put it over your bank account, and then you can wire it out right then, because it's already been cleared. It's already proven money that is yours for sure. But if all you have is securities, you gotta sell something to generate the cash, and the, the cash won't be available for you in for at least one or three days. Now, at the end of the day, you're also gonna say, when you take the money out, do you wanna withhold taxes? So if I need to net $10,000, and I say, yes, I wanna withhold taxes, and they withhold 20%, well, I'm only gonna get 8,000 bucks out. So if you need to net $10,000, you should do one of two things. Sell $12,000 of it, so that we can withhold $2,000 to send to the tax man, or don't withhold anything, and that way, when you do file your taxes the following year, you have a tax bill due. Either way, if you're gonna have $10,000 net and you're gonna withhold taxes, you need to sell more than 10,000 bucks worth of shares or more of, uh, to raise the dollars to, to cover the taxes. I don't uh, re recommend withholding taxes hardly ever. But if you are gonna do that, because a lot of people like that, you need to sell more than 10,000 bucks. All right, so that's the first case, and then I'll go upstairs and I'll show you some screenshots on how I would do it, and uh, hopefully this will be helpful to you as well. But remember, if you need money tomorrow in an IRA, actually, it doesn't even matter if it's an IRA, any account, you can't get it if it's in securities. You just can't. If you need money, you've got to sell the security first. It doesn't work where you're just like stroking a check. It doesn't work like that. All right, so I hope this helps. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll go upstairs and we'll do part two of this here in just a second. Thanks, guys.